All right, let's talk about tipping, okay? There was this little moment in a video I just shared. Respectfully, shut up, you make tips. Respectfully, you chose to be a cook. I chose server, so. And that got the conversation going in the comments. People were confused if the cooks and chefs received a portion of the server's tips or not. Oh, you tipped me. And people that worked in restaurants inside the United States versus people outside of the United States had very different answers about that. So let's just talk about it. Y'all listen up, all right? Yep. Now I'm gonna limit this discussion to tipping in full service restaurants in the United States, because that's my experience. I was a server for 22 years in restaurants in Nashville, Tennessee, and Los Angeles, California. Welcome to the Hotel California. Now before I get into whether the servers share their tips with the cooks and chefs, I wanna talk about the history of tipping. I also wanna talk about what a normal tip is, what's expected by the servers in the US. This is your tip. I'm gonna put it on the table, and every time you mess up, I'm gonna take a dollar away, okay? Oh, hell no. And I wanna talk about a few laws that have been passed over the years that have affected tipping practices in the United States. And now a little history. Are you bringing up old So wealthy Americans in about the 1850s traveled to Europe and that's where they learned tipping. They brought it back in the 1860s. It was seen as kind of a show of wealth, a little extra on top of what they were paying. This is $5,000 for your tip. You are kidding. Not everybody liked it. A lot of people hated it. JP Morgan's daughter hated it and opened a restaurant in New York City where tipping was uh, not allowed. In spite of that, tipping kept catching on more and more in the United States. What really spread it was the Pullman railroad cars and the abolition of slavery. Recently freed slaves in the 1860s were hired as service workers, most notably on the Pullman uh, Railroad dining cars. They were really underpaid. They don't wanna see a black man have nothing. And then they had to rely to survive on the kindness of strangers tipping them on top of their wages. Well, that's just rude. You know what time it is. And as these trains went around the country, it also spread the concept of tipping more and more. Restaurant servers more and more started depending on tips to survive to the point that when the minimum wage was established, tipped employees were not even included in that. No. And in 1966, Congress established the tip credit, which allowed restaurants to pay tipped employees below minimum wage. Oh my God. In 1996, that wage was frozen by Congress at $2.13 an hour. And that has still not gone up to this day. Wow. Currently 43 of the 50 states still use the tip credit law. In most of them, servers are paid $2.13 an hour. It all goes towards taxes and then some. So they are completely surviving on tips. That was my situation when I worked in Nashville. My paychecks were zero and everything I made to survive on was tips. Seven states do not use the tip credit. So I worked in Los Angeles, California. California does not. So we got full minimum wage plus tips. But most servers in the US are making below minimum wage, which brings me to what is a normal tip, what's expected. In my experience, servers across the board in full service restaurants expect 20%. I figure 2% of all sales is fire. 2%? We'd have to shut down. I mean, all right, 3%. Well, don't go too late. This is not my opinion. This is a fact. I've worked in 12 restaurants. It's expected 20%. You could say 15 to 20%, but we were always hoping for 20%. I give 10% service for 10% tippers. Oh no, am I the reason you can only afford Bath and Body Works? Hmm. A couple years I did the math of my own and I averaged a little over 19% across the board tips. But the servers don't take all that home. We tip out. Tip out? Yeah, you gotta tip out the bartender, the bussers, the food runner, and the hostess. It's about 25, 30% of what you made. Damn it. The tip out here sucks. Now for years, it was actually illegal for servers to share their tips with the back of the house. Darn too, he's going to restaurant jail. Ah. But in 2018, Congress changed that law. And in those states that do not use the tip credit that pay full minimum wage front and back of the house, servers can now legally share their tips with the back of the house. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. In fact, the last couple years I worked as a server here in California, we did tip out the back of the house. But that's up to each individual restaurant, and some do, some don't. And in those states that still use the tip credit, which is the vast majority of states, they still can. So the back of the house is not receiving tips in most situations. Come on, man. Come on. However, they are usually getting paid a lot more. In those states that use the tip credit, servers are getting like 213 an hour. The guys cooking the food might be making 
I don't know, 15 to 25 plus an hour. So in some situations, servers are making far more money off tips than they could get hourly from the owner anyway. And in some situations, they'd probably do better getting a higher hourly wage. It depends on the restaurant, the, the menu prices, the clientele, that type of thing. And I know a lot of people have a lot of different feelings and opinions about tipping. I'm not here to share my feelings. I'm just giving you some information. So please don't get mean in the comments. If you wanna have a civilized discussion about this, great. If you wanna tell me what tipping is like in your country or your state, I'd love to hear it. Again, keep it civil. What would pickles do? Like a hug? I'm trying to fade